Hi everyone, you're watching Daya Dash, and I hope you're having an amazing day. And while I'm busy with my day, I'm taking a little moment to analyze an interesting movie I watched yesterday, more like a documentary, um, but you have to take it um, with a grain of salt and do your own cross-referencing because even with the documentaries, right, um, especially mainstream documentaries, they throw their little flavor on it and <clears throat> their spin on it and, you know, upon looking at it further you'll see the mistakes they made you're not sure if it was intentional or oversight but nevertheless you know we like to dash deception here and um i want to keep people on the right path and i myself am looking in, into all this stuff because it relates to all our history and answers the big questions in life you know the what the why the how the where you know so um I want to show you a couple of clips because this gentleman shows really good images. Um, I was watching this on Tubi. It's called Anunnaki. Um, it's a 2017 documentary. Um, so it's been up for a while. And I found it on YouTube for you guys. That way you don't have to go digging through, you know, uh, all these apps and stuff. Because sometimes they're a little annoying. When it comes to the copyright, but I'm citing fair use and I'm urging people to watch things themselves because it um, complements the Bible and actually explains a lot of the stories in Enoch and um, Sumerian culture, Sumar, um, Shinar, Babylon, all that stuff. So you'll get a lot of these names and a lot of people are doing their own research on this topic. So I'm just adding to it. So hopefully it complements what you're doing too. So I am going to say bye-bye and um, we'll play a little bit of this because um, very, very interesting. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but how it relates to some of the research that's out there. Their ways are strange. Over hundreds of years, they have been called gods and angels. And now, in our modern age, many see them as aliens visiting Earth and bringing great knowledge. The truth of their real origin and purpose is much more bizarre and amazing than anything previously believed. Prepare to witness the demystification of a sacred and ancient past. Prepare to see the Anunnaki as they really were, and in so doing, we will discover the truth about so many other things. From the Garden of Eden to the Great Flood, from the God of the Bible to the secrets of Enoch, all shall be revealed. In truth, the Anunnaki are a group of ancient Mesopotamian deities. They are to be found in Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian and Assyrian cultures. The exact numbers descriptions and roles all contradict each other. According to the earliest Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki were the most powerful of gods in the rich pantheon and were descended from An, the greatest of the gods. Later, they became the seven judges who sit upon the throne in the underworld. They remain this way for some time, even in the Epic of Gilgamesh. According to old Babylonian texts, they were gods of the underworld, not of heaven. The name simply means offspring of Anu or An, the sky god, and Ki. The most prominent and probably well known of the Anunnaki was Enlil, who cleaved heaven and earth in two. Anu decided to take the heavens and left the earth to Enlil and Ki. 
Ki is most likely the Sumerian version of the mother goddess, seen in cultures across the globe. The physical evidence of worship of the Anunnaki is scarce. Most of what we know comes to us from texts. It appears that each of the Anunnaki were worshipped separately in individual cults. And because of this, no evidence of them as a group has been found. No image of them altogether. As such, the practices of worship of the Anunnaki is thin on the ground. The first mention of them is to be found in the reign of Gudir, the third dynasty of Ur. It is a term used to denote the most important deities of the Sumerian pantheon, the descendants of An. Exactly which deities were members of the group, referred to as the Anunnaki, is difficult to know. There is no complete list of them that survives. One of the texts mentions 50 or so members of them associated with the ancient city of Eridu. And yet, when we read of the descent of Inanna into the underworld, there are only seven. They are judges who condemn her to death. There is a group of deities known as the Ikigi, and they are sometimes confused with the Anunnaki. However, in the poem of Ira, both groups are different. In one flood myth, the Igigi are sixth generation gods who perform labours for the Anunnaki. However, after 40 days they revolt against their masters, and so Enki, one of the Anunnaki, replaces them with humans. I'll pause it right there for a second. That's really interesting because um, there's been a lot, <clears throat> a lot of discussion on the a Gigi being uh, so-called the uh, um, the story, um, the result of Genesis one, and that there was two creation myths. One in Genesis one, which some people say so-called um, light-skinned people come from. I don't know. So, um, some people have different markers. I can't tell. Some of us have RH negative blood. I can't tell you what's what. Um, that's why I'm researching a lot of this stuff too. So very interesting. Quite remarkable. It is obvious that Mesopotamian myths heavily influenced or were the origin of much of the biblical Old Testament. In the Babylonian creation text, known as the Enuma Elish, the god Marduk divides the Anunnaki and gives them roles. Three hundred in heaven and three hundred on earth. As a thank you, the Anunnaki built Esigilu as an abode for Marduk, Enlil, and Ea. When they had finished, they built themselves shrines. In later Assyrian texts, they were offspring of Anu and Ki, who were, who were brother and sister, and themselves children of the gods of the celestial poles, and whose heritage stretched back to the original gods Tiamat and Absu. Here we begin to see clues to the use of these deities as names for the bodies in the sky, the stars that shine above. This, then, is the brief 
knowledge we have of the Anunnaki. Now we must delve deeper, and to do so, we must enter their world. skip over not to give it away he was showing some tablets he shows you know you can <clears throat> imagine in these flood stories that a lot of them hid in the oceans um my neighbor has been playing that song from annie lennox um sweet dreams and it said the seven seas and that seven got stuck in my head you know you see how you know the most high works to bring it all together in your minds it's amazing the angels, known as the Anunnaki, Anunnaki, or great sons of Anu, were the founders of their culture. The names Angel, Anunnaki, and Anakim have much in common. They are indicative of the ancient ancestors who brought the secrets to the rest of the world. Interestingly, Anunnaki is phonetically similar to the Hebrew Anakim, the giant race who appear in the story later, and also Anger Kok, the shaman from Greenland to Alaska. They were known as the Shining Ones. The earliest accounts of the Shining Ones can be found in four principal sources. Firstly, in the Sumerian tablets from the Library of Nippur, where they are named the Ananaj. Secondly, in the Book of Enoch, where they are referred to as Angels, Watchers and Nephilim. Thirdly, in the Book of Jubilees. And fourthly, in the Biblical Book of Genesis, where they are given the name Elohim. The Sumerian El is usually translated as God, but the feminine Elohim is the plural of El. In Genesis, the phrase Ah Elohim is also used, meaning the Elohim. <laughs> means brightness and shining. Indeed, the Semitic word El is found in many ancient languages. For instance, the Anglo-Saxon Elf means shining being, and so El needs to be translated not as God, but as the Shining One, and Ah Elohim, being plural, should read the Shining Ones. Gives the shining a whole new meaning, huh, guys? It's freaking crazy. And I guess some of us are related to these uh, Japanese people because they have the same, I guess, features or bloodline as the Basque. And the Basque is known as having the highest concentration of RH negative blood. Oh, this is so creepy. If you switch those words around, that's in my name also. Oh, that's not even. The thing is too funny. But it makes me want to delve deeper because there, there is something. There was a seeding of this plane, as we know. Okay, so, um, you know, and there's a lot of people for the good side bringing the truth out. And that's what I'm here trying to do. Or means sons of the shining one or sons of light. In Ireland, the term for shining was Aim. There may be a connection here with the Tuatha de Danan, the Shining Ones of Ireland, and the serpent cult that St. Patrick had removed from the Emerald Isle. Yeah. Yeah. 
Don't mind the ad, we'll let that play. So yeah, um, a lot of these tribes, um, others are researching also. If you haven't checked uh, checked out Lex Will, um, he's also looking into this topic. So a lot of us are doing our independent research. Also, there is an unusual semi-nomadic bear-worshipping tribe in Japan, known as the Ainu. The Ainu look Caucasian with round heads, white skin, wavy thick hair and grey or blue eyes. The Ainu are said to have been living in many of Japan's islands like Okinawa for over 7,000 years. And it is said that the Ainu share a language similarity with the Basque who live in the Pyrenees, the mountains bordering Spain and France. cool huh guys shows more crazy images that we've all seen i was trying to get to the part where he talks about <clears throat> um how some of them are like fish just made me think you know um you know mermaids poseidon let me just show some of these images it's just crazy right you've seen these images yeah the fish and all that wife and two had two sons Enlil, the storm god ruled the air and atmosphere and Enki, the water. Enki is also the wise teacher, known as Ib or Oanis, who led the fish beings that came from the sea, or indeed, from across the sea. You see that, guys? And a lot of people talk about the kingdom under the sea because, you know, you got that song from Little Mermaid. I'm not even going to play it. That's just another copyright thing I'll have to explain. But you can check it out yourself, Under the Sea. And we can see on this um, movie, right, what do they show? Like the royalty, what uh, Prince Eric married this fish bish, you know, and they formed some type of alliance, okay, so under the sea, little mermaid, and a lot of people talk about wizards, warlocks, I don't agree with this Dr. Pat Holiday, um, because, you know, Christianity and witchcraft are one and the same, and these Christian missionaries really love going to Africa, right, and uh, stirring these things up, and just looking at oddities, right, so um i'll let you listen a little bit i don't agree with the whole jesus cult because you can't fight the devil with the devil but um there's a lot of videos about the kingdom of, under the sea and the technology and that they have uh computers underneath there yes and that sometimes even when you dream you know it's like different realms right <clears throat> So um, that song I was listening to, um, Sweet Dreams, and you think about the damn seven seas and the seven principalities, you know, crazy. As miracle ministers, but then when they started reading our books and things, they would shut the doors and we couldn't get back in. So God sent Dr. Sabrina and I started sending us to Africa in the year 2000. And by then, I had been in the deliverance ministry at least 25 years or more. And when we went into Africa, we discovered things that I personally had never heard before. And there was a man there that was a witch doctor, and he asked me if I would write a book for him. So I said, yes, I'll write a book for you. And if I had not been in the deliverance ministry, I could not have written that book. There was knowledge given in his testimony, a few things that I'd never heard of at that time, but God opened the door that we started going over there regularly, and he made some trips over here. So the book went through several resets, you know, and when he would come over, there were things that I had to ask him that I did not understand supernaturally. So we blew up five computers trying to get the book through the computers. And she was praying and I was writing. 
Well, we finally got it out, but what happened was the book has opened up the American eyes in this country so that people could understand supernatural things a little bit better than they could, and it pointed in the direction, hey, this stuff is real. And so the water spirit kingdom is what God sent us over there to know about in addition to to writing that book. Because you see in Africa, they are generation to generation witches and wizards. And the father leaves the power to the son and that father leaves his power to the oldest son so they know what they're doing pretty well and so when he started talking about the city under the sea i had never ever heard anything like that so he was uh, under the sea 12 years as a as a wizard the stories that he told us we know that they're real because we've seen the powers operate Now, for instance, under the sea, he said he saw computers before they ever appeared up on the land. And he said the computers, they would give the wizards computers and they would assign Christians to the wizards. And the wizards could sit in their home and they could see through the computer their subject. They were supposed to get that person's soul. And so they would watch that person very carefully. So anyway, the devil told them just to choose real Christians because of the fact that the Christians were real and that he already had. Here she goes with her propaganda. We're going to just skip all that crap. Just showing that this is a real thing. I wonder if she says anything of substance. If not, we'll keep it moving. That people do. And these things that people do are things that we call sin, like disobedient, pride, deception, things like this. Well, you see, whenever a person falls under the powers of these spirits, these spirits come inside of them and then they drive them to do these various sinful things. Now, what deliverance ministry? Well, that is true, but a lot of her stuff is her spiritual plug. Um, you just look up a uh, city under the sea, marine, uh, marine kingdom, and you can see where a lot of these entities are ruling today. Maybe the seven are ruling the seven seas. Um, very interesting. Of the word of God, and you live a holy life, a righteous life with the help of the Holy Spirit, and God will help you to make it to, to this place. So I just wanted to make an example as to how heaven is also in the spiritual realm but it's a physical place that we will see things we see different beautiful places fallen angels and majority of principalities and powers some fell into some are in the domain of the atlantic ocean the pacific ocean the indian ocean and everywhere there is rivers and streams lakes lagoons even sometimes ponds and pools these spirits can lodge in and make their domain and begin to have their meeting place but when we talk about the sea the ocean it is usually occupied by the queen of the coast and in the queen of the coast also you will find many people think that the queen of the coast is the spirit which is the dominant power that rules in the water world but the real power dominant power that rules is leviathan leviathan is the principality that rules in the water world leviathan and also there are sub other demonic entities like asimudi the marine 
kingdom or sarines we have the sarines and we have the marines whoever you find half of their the top of their bodies are humans and the down part is fish the sarines and the marines and then sometimes you also have the quelled serpent domain whereby their top is human and their part the, the from the waist downwards is snakes and then we have different monstrous demonic entities also that occupies the seas and that is where the marine kingdom is very advanced in technology very what advanced in technology and in beauty very beautiful place the only place i can compare it to with those who have been there and i'm going to give you and i give you an example of a lady who visited that place and operated from crazy 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 so what a spirit kingdom is real just saying that's where you get the whole little mermaid from um that's where you get all these um ideas from you got people um hotels trying to make underwater hotels and all this stuff would you trust sleeping there yeah, good luck because you don't know what kind of monsters are there that it's gonna like you really trust that glass good luck to you Let's see what else they really got here. Um, they were seeing really interesting stuff. You guys got to watch it on your own because I'm not going to take away. But just like some of the stuff that was said, he gives um, a lot of things to research, even though um, his take on Enoch wasn't correct because um, he was talking about the wrong Enoch. There are two Enochs, one from Cain, okay, um, and one from Seth, right? Or Aku and whom it is said appeared in Egypt from a submerged island. We also have to include the origins of the Hindu Naga, serpent deities, who also came from a lost island. easily be concluded that the shining ones of Sumeria, Egypt and India were really incoming people from a lost or destroyed land. These connections allow us to piece together their story and see a little more of the historical territory, much of which has been lost or deliberately hidden from us of course deliberately hidden well i'll read you just what i have so you guys can go watch it yourself because i don't want to make this video super long and i got to step out um he was reading from enoch chapter six um, um let me see which was interesting um let me see first let me go to where I was on Esword, because he was talking about this Enoch, which I will show you in Genesis 4, 17, chapter 4, verse 17. Let me bring it up closer for you guys. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son. Enoch and unto Enoch was born Erad, Erad beget Mehuyael and Mehuyael beget Methusael and Methusael beget Lamech and a lot of names are interchangeable doesn't that happen in your family line even when they branch off in different directions guys so he was like talking about Enoch like it was just one person but that's not true and 
um, there's there was a righteous one and not a righteous one. So there, and then you got on Seth's line. You have to go to Genesis five, and it'll tell you right here the line for that um, Enoch. And it said, let me bring it up closer. And Seth lived after he begat Enos, <clears throat> eight hundred and seven years and begat sons and daughters. Genesis chapter five, verse eight. And all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. Verse nine, and Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan. Verse 10, and Enos lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. Verse 11, and all the days of Enos were 905 years, and he died. And then, um, and Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalaleel. And Canaan lived after he begat Mahalaleel 840 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. And Mahalalia lived sixty and five years and begat Jared. And Mahalalia lived after he begat Jared eight hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalia were eight hundred ninety and five years and he died. And Jared lived in hundred sixty and two years and he begat Enoch. See? So Enoch's from Jared and I looked up this um apparently both Enoch's are both Hebrew 2585, which was interesting because it's Chinook. Chinook. Chan. Interesting, huh guys? An antidiluvian patriarch, Enoch. Total KJV occurrences, 16. Strong's Hebrew and Greek dictionaries. So he was talking about Enoch, like that was one entity. So if you're not on top of this stuff, um, you're going to get taken for a ride. Um, he was reading out of, um, let me see. Um, you'll hear him talk about um, Genesis, not Genesis, Enoch. He was um, reading from here and how, like, the um men and women interbreeded which i'll um i can actually like bring it to that point because he goes into it um yeah so let me go back that way i can just open that up while he's reading from it because i think i remember where let's just let this ad go for a sec right because um he was reading like what happened with the human race and how it's been corrupted and how there are like different species apparently or whatever. I mean, we don't even know what's in these woods, guys, right? Half of us don't even go camping. I mean, there's a lot of weird creatures out there. I've been reading some crazy historic uh, um, comic book lines that are just crazy because they do hide a lot of the truth in these books. They pose it as fiction and it makes you wonder because just think of the mascots they have at certain, um, you know, here in Philadelphia, they have like an orange monster now. Um, I think his name is Gritty. <laughs> and I was looking up the monster. It's like from Monsters, Inc. And this hairy creature. I'm like, look at these things. Like, they look up to these entities. It's so weird. Let's see what they say here. I think it was some interesting stuff here. <laughs> in the epic of Anzu, the Igigi are superior in the sense that the Anunnaki are of the Absu, or the deep. This, of course, must remind us of the Hindu ideas of the Naga, serpent deities who reside in the deep, and are no less holy for it. See, like, he throws in his little spin, like, they're not holy because they rebelled against the Most High and messed up creation, and lusted after women like he even like spoke of. So this guy's kind of confused, but of course his stuff gets publicized and he got the spinning ball. So he has his own take on it. 
okay because there are evil entities that are controlling people and they are demonic yeah, it was around here. He was like reading from Enoch chapter 6. Because they weren't supposed to come and take wives as they chose. Multiply. But in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose as wives from among the children of men and beget his children. And Senjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together, and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. From this union, a hybrid race was produced, a race of giants, so we are told. Others together with them took unto them wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go into them, and to defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants, and they became pregnant, and they bare great giants whose height was three thousand elves, who consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. All right, so what was so holy about that whole intermingling exactly? You see how they um, corrupted mankind, and then we don't want to act like there's an outside force. That's freaking bullcrap, right? Not given the... Um, responsibility yeah we're responsible for our own actions but these people um you know well, beings knew better they had a responsibility with great power comes responsibility they already had um immortality they already had everything they needed right so we're the ones that have to die and go through whatever and that's why the most high has humans have children so your line can keep going they didn't need to do that um, and then this guy wanted to say, I don't know what happened to the seven, where they are. Um, okay, well, I have the book of Enoch right here. And it doesn't tell you the title on this thing, but it tells you here, names and functions of the seven archangels. So if he knows Enoch so well, and I was highlighting how it says the time of Jared and the righteous Enoch, the one that was taken up to heaven in Genesis chapter five is the one that is Jared's son. So that's the correct um, Enoch. So what's he talking about? Talking like the one from chapter four who build the city and all this bull crap. See, they'd be messing with people. So unless you do your own research, that stuff can like confuse you even more guys, you know? So take baby steps when it comes to this stuff and vet everything. But it tells you right here, and these are the names of the holy angels who watch. Um, Ariel, one of the holy angels who is over the world and over Tartarus, Raphael, one of the holy angels who is over the spirits of men, Raguel, one of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world of the luminaries, Michael, one of the holy angels to wit, he is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos, Sarah Quael, one of the holy angels who is set over the spirits who sin in the spirit. Please excuse my background, guys. You know the world is in chaos, obviously. <laughs> we got marine spirits. We got all kind of things going on. So um, just bear with me. We'll write it out. We're almost done. Gabriel, one of the holy angels, who is over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim. Remiel, one of the holy angels, whom God set over those who rise. 
Okay, so the seven right there. And that's when they talk about like in Game of Thrones, they seven, the seven, they worship the seven. Um, constantly because um, you get that in that song Sweet Dreams, you know, with um, the Annie Lennox. And it's so weird because my neighbor was just like pumping. He was literally playing the song over and over again for the past week. I guess it was the most high making him uh, play it so it can be stuck in my head. And then I had that seven. I'm like, here we go with the seven C's again, you know. And uh, then you got all this marine talk and where do they get their um, technology? Like, uh, you know, this technology has already been implemented underneath these oceans, right? And just like the waters were divided above and below, you know, um, there's entities that can um, sustain themselves beneath the ocean. And some people go like witches, like they were trying to talk about, that they go in like a trance and they can transport themselves into the ocean and talk to these entities and bring information back a lot of them want sacrifice a lot i mean there is always something right going on and there's statues all over of poseidon i had one up there was one in california where i thought was really weird because it was like a hole to do a hole to do i guess right um because he was naked and it's at the um, Sacramento Convention Center in California. So um, it was a huge thing because he was naked, Greek God Poseidon. But just look at all the statues that's all over the place in America with sirens, mermaids. Everyone thinks they're like so nice. And then you start seeing all these, um, you know, mythological stories of um, being you know, hurt by these creatures, but uh, there is so many I was just showing before, you know, Poseidon, Poseidon, statue, I'll just put statue, um, you can put it in America if you want, I don't want to keep this long, but Marine Spirit Kingdom, I don't even know what I'm going to title this yet, guys, but it's just like my own research, um, obviously when you're doing your research, um, and you're watching documentaries, especially where when they're on cable and stuff. I did initially see this on Tubi because, you know, I was just looking up on, I don't know, something made me look up certain terms. I look up the Fallen, Anunnaki, things like that, because, you know, they'll always give you, um, you know, certain truths, even though they wrap it up in their own spin, you know, hence the term spin doctors. But um, let me see where this is. doesn't say exactly, but they're all over the place. There was one in Virginia, that famous one that I was showing. They love making them naked, too. Is that the one in Virginia? Yeah, this one, I think it's in Virginia with the turtle and stuff. So it just shows you right at the beach, you know, all these things. Why does everybody have a fascination now? I'll put the link to this. It's Anunnaki, full ancient humans, alien documentary. And they even admit, like, there was a, um, a type of blending of these two species. And that's why you get a lot of anomalies today. And a lot of people don't want to see it that way. And, of course, these Christian churches are going to lie to you. Um, it seems like even some of these so-called witches, you know, who don't even know they're witches because Christianity... In witchcraft it's all pagan traditions right like what's so different right and you needed human sacrifice like they're all about sacrificing Jesus and using his blood to get out of trouble with God I mean that sounds like what witches do all the freaking time <laughs> like whatever but let's just uh, keep it objective when you do your research um, but they talk about marine spirits um, there is a lot of um, videos like that um, Enoch chapter six, they were reading from, it's a really good book. If you don't have it, I have it here. They have like, it says there's a first Enoch. So I have this one. It's from, um, I believe it's RT Charles, that translation that people seem to like, but I read just the Enoch one because then you got, you know, that's, called the Ethiopian Book of Enoch, as you can see. Let me see. Put it this way. And uh, then you got Enoch 2, the Slavonic Secrets of Enoch. Talk about Metatron. They talk about weird stuff, but uh, I'm not sure if it's almost like they're talking about the 
the one from Cain. Is it that Enoch exactly? So I, I don't even really read that one. I mean, I guess I could for research um, sake it's there. But um, a lot of the truth is in the first Enoch. And that's from um, the Enoch in chapter 5 that was translated up, guys. Like, he apparently didn't even die. He was translated up, okay? So he's even deemed as the so-called Messiah, okay? So when people are talking this Jesus stuff, you guys could just be confusing. Uh, it's like a comp the New Testament is a compilation of many stories. Um, so check this stuff out. I thank you so much for watching. I didn't want to make this long. Hopefully it's not long. Um, watch that um, if you can, you know, if you want to, if it's interesting to you, if you care about this type of stuff. I am because then you got videos talking about RH negative blood and ancient aliens and all this stuff. And uh, whatever. I mean, we are a little different. We're very intuitive, but that could just be because you're spiritual and you're connected with the source, you know. Um, even the fallen, they have a creator. There's still one in charge that was by himself before anything was created. And the Bible tells you that too. Like at one time he was just alone. Like we're just all a figment of his imagination, of his amazing creativity, right? And the angels are also that too. So regardless if the angels helped with creation, it's like having a foreman on a project and being a worker and stuff. You're not the boss, you know, you, but you're carrying out the orders. They could have carried out the orders, you know, whatever, but then they went off and did stupid shit because then look at creation now. We got all these diseases and these mutations, these genetic deformities, and the Most High is a perfect creator. He's not going to make things to break down and be all mutated like that. It was other entities who thought that they were better formants, and they weren't, obviously, so... I hope this was interesting. It definitely was interesting to watch. I got a lot of notes, and um, I'll talk to you guys soon. I have so much more content, but I also have to live life as well, right? So, um, but I'll keep stuff posted, and uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.